Welcome back to an episode, a new episode of Control the Tide. You know, it's me, your boy, Consistent, and we got Stone Cold over here. Before we get into it, we got a little, we got something to show y'all real quick, some special thing. Special, special edition. Stone Cold, you want to explain what this is? You know, man, that's just, you know, a one-on-one circuit drown piece, you know what I mean? And um, just to know who produced this, you know what I mean? Look at yeah, the back. If you, if you uh, want to know who produced it, you know what I'm saying? This has been a Wave TV production. What design, I mean. You know what I'm saying? Wave TV production, Wave Hold up, Wave. stand up all the shows you're wearing, bro. You still yeah, wearing man, something? you know what I'm saying? I got it on me, too, you know what I'm saying? This is all unreleased shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm headed so wave down, you know what I mean? He's gonna put you right here on the arm. If you wanna be as fly as me, you know what I'm saying? If you wanna be fresh like this, yo, man, it's easy. Just make sure you tap in with us on Wave Studios, that way on Instagram. And yeah, man, you can get fly like this, you know what I'm saying? We got exclusive shit always coming at you. What's the drop coming? Black Friday, man. Black Friday, November 29th, man. We opening the site. We got a lot of new shit coming, you know what I'm saying? Limited shit, you know what I'm saying? It's only gonna be available for one week. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna have to shop from that Friday to that next Friday. If you don't buy during that time, you're gonna miss it, bro. You're just gonna miss it, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be, and we're gonna move on. We're gonna keep doing other shit, and it's just gonna be something that you just missed out on. You feel me? So if you like these, I got about four or five more colorways of these. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got long sleeves, we got hoodies, we got track suits, nigga. We got everything, man. So if you wanna get fly, you know what I'm saying? Tap in with us. We having it all, affordable prices. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna do crazy black friday deal i'm damn near finna get y'all to close away for free man or for wholesale for what, for what i'm paying for my not even gonna make a profit right now because right now the goal is not for me to get rich off of y'all and close it's for me to have y'all niggas in exclusive pieces have y'all niggas in the wave shit you feel me and you know we're just gonna rock out like that he wants y'all to be some waivers yeah i want y'all to be some waivers pretty much or surfers let's call y'all surfers surfer, whatever you want to call it because surfers ride the wave yeah facts okay so, so we want a group of surfers to shop, okay? Okay, back to the episode. <laughs> so this episode, we're doing a new thing. It's a series we started. I started. It's going to call um, the ABCs of Negative Emotions. You know, I feel like we should do a series now. So like each week, we're going to try and get more consistent with it. We're going to give you a negative emotion and how to fight it. Today, we're doing a double header just to make it special for you. Double so it's going to be A and B, the first two letters of the alphabet, if you do not know. So the first negative emotion we're going to start with is anger. Um, anger is the thing that we all deal with. Before I start going into it, do you want to think so? Stone, how how do you like perceive anger? Do you perceive it negative, positive? How do you look at it? It's funny because every time you answer, ask me this question, well, at least for the past couple episodes, <laughs> I always say some some, some, some some scriptural stuff. That's fine. The so, is, get off what you got to get yeah, off. Yeah, I know it's just funny how this is, because it's not intentional, but this is just the first thing that came to my mind. In the Bible, I don't know what chapter and what verse, but it says somewhere in there, it's okay to be angry, but don't sin. And so I you, think it's okay to be angry. So I it's think, okay to have anger, ang- angry emotions, but when you act on those emotions, I think that's like the that, problem. That's what I was gonna say. So it's okay to be angry. Basically, that's why I'm basing my my thought process off of anger off of is scriptural and also with what I've researched. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be angry, but if we act off of that anger, that's usually when a big problem start to happen. Like, you know, like violence, self-destructive behaviors, things of that nature. So to give you all a little hit about what um, anger is, anger is an emotion characterized by antagonistic feelings towards someone or something that has wronged you. Anger is not solely a negative emotion. Anger has positive uses such as expressing negative feelings or motivating you to solve problems. So, for example, I can be angry that um, I didn't get the job I wanted. But what I can do is let that anger motivate me to keep looking for better jobs, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. Um, there are different appro- there are three approaches to dealing with anger that we all use. Expression, suppression, and, calm- and calming. So, you know, expressing is when you express your anger in an assertive manner. You can express your anger in an assertive manner, but as long as it's not aggressive. When you're aggressive, that's when you usually, like, you know, like, you might get to about to get to an altercation with somebody, Things call somebody out their name. Yeah. You can uh, you can express you can assertively express your anger without you having to offend somebody. Suppressing anger is it was when you hold it inside. Mm-hmm. You know that's usually when anger gets the worst when you hold it inside. Because you hold it inside, that's, that's what we all do. Yeah. Especially as men, like especially as like men, like most men, like 
like me and you were kind of the same way. I'm a passive aggressive person. I don't try to have my anger come out. I try to hold it inside. But when we do that, yes. we are more at risk of it exploding. Yeah, and that isn't good at all. That's never good. <laughs> so like you, you kind of start. You try not to think about it, but it's still always there lurking. And you, but you need to try and focus on the positive things. You know what I mean? Like don't let it consume you. All these negative emotions. The main thing you want to do is not let that emotion consume you. We're not saying it's not that it's wrong to feel it, but don't let it consume you. Right. Don't let it become you. Right. Is what we're saying. Um, Calming the anger means controlling your outward behavior and internal responses, such as lowering your heart rate, take a couple of breaths, and letting the feeling subside. Mm. It means you still felt it, but you're letting it subside. You're like, okay, I feel this way. You take some breaths. Think about why you're feeling that, <laughs> the origin of it, and how to health, do in a healthy manner negate that emotion in your life. A good inhale and exhale is always, that'll get you back. If you just, if you remove all thoughts from your head and just focus on the breath, And just this little thing about anger is so powerful for me because like these last couple of months, I'll just be candid, I have been an angry person. I wasn't like, I didn't go into rage, but I was angry. And that anger was making me take lash out at people I didn't want to lash out on. And I didn't be in control. I suppressed it. I let the anger control me instead of me controlling the anger. Powerful men are those who can control their emotions. And that's the best way. When like you can't control your emotions, you become weak. All right. We, we, I can't call you brother knowledge. Andrew, Andrew, that brother. Somebody else has that knowledge. Somebody everybody else has that brother knowledge. I gotta give you a nickname. Andrew Tate, I'm holding my hands like him. That's how he be holding his hands. Um, like, <laughs> so basically like the thing is like why we're talking about anger so much because when my anger became it evolved anger evolved to the second emotion I'm gonna talk about. It's not on the board, but they're very close connected, so Anger Damn. can evolve into we gotta bitterness. We got to put it right here because it's not on the Anger can, can evolve into bitterness. Bitterness is anger. Which is letter B. Yes, B. So, second, second <laughs> alphabet. Letter. Anger can evolve into bitterness if it's not held in check. So, bitterness is anger and disappointment towards someone or someone. Someone or something that treated you wrongly. wrongly. But it's like a more intense version of anger. Like, when you're bitter, like, I can give me, myself, an example. When I was bitter, like... I was like, bitterness makes you a hater, Loki. <laughs> like, hating. Because you're like, bitterness also makes you, because I can say bitterness also includes comparison, too. Mm -hmm. Like, bitterness, you're like, why are they shining? Why are they, why are they you know, mm -hmm. doing all this? But I'm still in this. I'm still mad because they did me wrong. Right. They, did they this, don't this, deserve this. that. They don't deserve that. They deserve to be fucked up. They so, fucked me up. So that bitterness will make you get to that point. And I just want like, but the the root of bitterness is anger. So like, what I had to do with my bitterness, I had to look, look, know what the origin was. I had to understand why I was feeling it, and why I had to like the way I had to cope with it is like, first things first. We've had an episode like this. We probably have it somewhere in the vault. But comparison is what was the main thing when I was bitter. Comparison, anger, and disappointment. I was angry because of what happened to me. I was disappointed because that person I really counted on, I didn't expect them to do that to me, mm -hmm. and then. I compare with how my life is right now, how my life was compared to how their life was going at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that bitterness is a very dangerous thing. Because with anger, you do anything out of pocket. Because, like, think about it. Like, to give you all cultural context, you know, like that, the phrase, you don't like me when I'm angry? Mm -hmm. That is true. <laughs> like, you don't like anybody when they're angry. They're angry, right. they're not themselves. Exactly. You do any, you do the most crazy things when you're angry. I know there's something that says like anger and wrath is kind of the same thing. There's also something scripture. I don't remember the phrase that says, "Don't let the sun go down on your wrath." Yeah, so right. Don't, Basically, don't like go to sleep mad. And that can go in your relationship, or even as yeah. you being by yourself, or you're single or in a relationship. Because when you go to bed mad or in anger, yeah. you're admitting that frequency into uh, the dream state, which was, you know, what I'm saying, it's your subconscious mind, which is going to, you know, what I'm saying. It essentially projects you down the wrong path. And it stays there. It stays there. That's what I'm saying. Because you're not releasing it. Right, you haven't released it. And you went to sleep with it. Now, like, your subconscious mind can we'll act on these things. We can put that up there. Now your subconscious mind can, like, act on, you know what I'm saying, your thoughts or your, your emotions at that time. Because it's kind of like how we talked about in the last episode about forgiveness. When you let that sit there, it has a hold on yeah, you. Yeah, and like it as, grows. And it grows, like... Imagine yourself like imagine yourself being angry at the moment. Imagine if you don't let it go. You're planting a seed, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you're still doing negative behavior or activities that are watering that seed, it goes to a tree. So that anger becomes bitterness, rage, wrath, resentment. Because bitterness is also considered resentment too. Mm -hmm. So that could be 
either a letter, we're gonna have it as letter B, but B, bitterness can also turn to resentment. Cause that's basically what it is. Resentment is dis disappointment, yeah. anger, sadness towards somebody. Right. So like, that's why it's so powerful for me because like, I've been in that place recently where I was anger and it became bitterness. I was like, dang, like I saw how it was affecting me. Cause I'm like, I'm an optimist, but I'm looking at everything like in a negative line. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm hating. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta look yourself in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm hating. And that's what this is. Actually, like, for me, like, nah, facts. I feel like us as people, like, people of any color or creed, we have to start looking more in the mirror than somebody else's. Like, before we cast, we throw a stone at somebody, we gotta look at ourselves in the mirror. We gotta face that inner darkness before mm -hmm. you even try to, like, even me, like, how am I gonna try and help everybody in this podcast or whatever I'm trying to do in my career and life if I still have stuff that I have to work on? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with me trying to work and do that while I'm doing it. Right. But you actually, with but me talking with y'all about this, that's me showing I'm actually doing the healing work, the right. work that I need to do exactly. so I can help people out. Right. And that's all that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to, you know what I'm saying, heal the broken communities of uh, that we are a part of, you know, because there's a lot of folks out here that's lost and broken and they don't even know. They think they good, but they really need some help. They need some control in the up the tide. That's what they need. <laughs> They need some tie control. They need some tie control. Sounds like a laundry detergent. Yeah, that is hard. I like that. I know there's tie though, but see, hey, we gotta put a tie. Hey, tie control. We might get sued, but we gotta put the tie logo on this. Yeah. <laughs> tie control. That's you know, you the mean. laundry detergent. Yeah. We'll get tie. We gotta make a logo. Control yeah. the tie, but just put you know CTT in the middle. Of the... <laughs> Instead of tie. Yeah. No, nah, that'd be hard. Maybe we won't get sued if we do it. We still nah. probably get sued. And if they sue us, <laughs> fuck. So fuck. yeah, like so. My thing is before you like, when you have that angry thought, like try to like, for me, like when I have an angry thought, I try to like think of something positive or I try to let that thing motivate me. Like whether it's like doing a healthy activity, like going to the gym, things of that nature. But I feel like that's good, but that's like a secondary action. Yeah, it's kind of like, what they call that? Like when you like, if you're trying to stop smoking, outlet, you, that's like you an start doing cocaine. Like it's like, oh, I don't smoke weed no more, but I do coke. Like it's like, you feel me? It's like, that's what do they call like that? A, so that's more like a substitute. But like, that's basically I know what you're saying. Come, I know you're trying you're to saying like, that. you're letting this negative thing uh, promote. Up. Well, okay, that was probably a bad example with the weed and the coke. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like more so like, you're, you're, you're substituting, like you're pulling from a negative place. Like you're pulling from a negative like frequency, but you're, you may be doing something positive, but like, you have to change your motivation from like. You can start internally before you start trying to work on it externally. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like. I mean, more, I go to the, I go to the gym. Like, I go to the gym, but yeah. like before I even start going to the gym with that anger, I had to work on the inner part before I even had to like, why am I angry? Yeah. Do some things on the on the inside right. before I go to the outside and try to like you know like use it as fuel to yeah exactly boost self development. You should. I mean, well, I mean, you can't use it as fuel in the you beginning. You can. There's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong with that. And like, still some, sometimes to, that's what it takes for you to like you know what I'm saying. Get in the gym or whatever like else you want to. There's do. no correct order to do things, but you still have to have that introspection moment. Yes, introspection. Is what I'm saying. You gotta have introspection. Cause like you can do that, but if all you're doing is like every time I get angry, I'm gonna go oh, to the gym. Like if you're not, so if you're not angry, then you're not gonna go. Like or if you're not motivated, then you're not gonna go. Like it's like building those habits. You know what I mean? Like of like okay, I'm gonna go regardless. Yeah, that's what you wanna do. Cause me, I'm like that type of person. I'm like, I'm like I ride the wave. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, like as far as like the way the ways of my emotions, like I like be locked in at the gym for a little bit. But it's like you know, once that emotion like leaves and I'm on a new emotion, like it's like okay, I'm not really focused that much on the gym anymore. But like what I really want to start doing is being more um, persistent and consistent like with my routine. Cause like it's really about routine and discipline, like you feel me? Cause that's what's like. Cause I you could, can't be emotionally swayed, like. Yeah, because like if you do that, you can easily be go. You go, in, you go into anything. Cause like for me, like I could say like building my own routine. This is probably gonna be a part. Of, this is gonna be another half of the episode. Mm -hmm. we, we're out of anger business. I'm gonna go back to it in a minute, but this could be another part. But for me, I had to learn how to build my own routine because the last four years, I had a routine that I was so used to, I didn't even have my own self routine. Right. I was doing things you, that- you was, your, your routine was intertwined with the needs and wants of other people. Yeah, and so not like, your own. So like, I was neglecting mine. So like, for me, I had to be like, what do I have to sit down and have that introspection, no matter what you're doing with the most or anything. When, even when you're building your own routine, you have to sit there and be like, what are my likes? Or you have to go explore and see what your likes or wants are. You have to do some ex exploration. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like you had, and then you had to set boundaries on that. Like for me, I had a lack of boundaries, mm -hmm. which messed up my routine eat too. Because like, I could be trying to do my own routine. As soon as somebody comes ask me for something, I throw my routine out the window. So like, you know, like a cell, a routine for any and everybody is important. Like, don't, don't, um, don't compromise or delay your routine for someone else. Like, if it's an emergency, like if somebody's about to die, that is okay. <laughs> But if it's not that important, put right, that boundary like up. Thing. Put that boundary up. It's okay. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a bag. But like, I have to realize it's okay to disappoint people. Mm -hmm. Like for me, me being a people pleaser is people pleaser Jeremiah. I hate disappointing people. Yeah. I hate saying no. <laughs> but for me, I had, I literally this week someone asked me for a favor. I was like, nah. Can't. Do it. Yeah, I didn't even say sorry. Right. I didn't even say sorry because like there's nothing to sorry, sorry about. about. Yeah. So, like, nah, I can't. Like, sorry, but I'm not gonna say sorry. But disappointment is okay because I feel like even with disappointment, there's so much power in disappointment because disappointment can move you to do something. Right. Like, and if you do it in a positive context, like, right. Like even when I was talking about the example of the job with anger, I'm disappointed I didn't get the job, but I'm not gonna let it take me down. I'm like, okay, then that maybe that wasn't for me because if it was for me, I won't have to chase after. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It won't Whether be it's a it. person, yeah, right. a job, mm -hmm. anything. Like so, disappointment can just mean like, okay, there's something greater. Because disappointment, if you have hope combined with disappointment, you'll never be swayed. You'll stand firm. You'll keep moving. You won't let it get stagnant. Right. Because sometimes we let disappointment get so, such a place of stagnation. We don't want to move. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go forward. We don't want to pursue better things in life. Soak in it we soak in it, it and yeah. sit in it, which is a human thing, which is nothing wrong with it. But like in that moment, feel it. But we're saying don't soak in a situation because mm -hmm. sometimes we soak in it so long, we're missing out on the blessings that we have or the blessings that we already do have. Because I know with me and my disappointment, I was so disappointed. I didn't see the blessings I already had already around me, all the good things I had around me. Mm -hmm. I just sat there. I was like, ah. Uh, I didn't get what I, I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't. I'm not here where I want to be. But like, all we like the joke we were cracking a couple times with um, Cap's album. I'm not too far behind, you know. <laughs> like, no, nah, I want more, but like, I can't be disappointed by the things I haven't got because I already have a lot to be thankful for. Right, I've already come so far, and that's. This is so much because, like, even this month, this is Thanksgiving month. Yeah, we're gonna have some more episodes during this month, but think about it. Sit down and take the time. What are you truly grateful for? Mm -hmm. Because we I get think, like, cause it's easy to think about the things that you don't have, and, you know what I'm saying, things you want and shit. And like for me, like recently, I've just been thinking, like, cause you know, like I low key almost like died low key, like on my birthday. You remember I was like drinking and driving, you and I like. See, this is North Point. I have no, I had no idea. I did not know anything. Yeah, like I was basically drinking and driving, which don't do that. You know what I'm saying? This was God sparing my life. You know what I mean? But like, it was my birthday. I just had got like hella drunk, but I thought I could drive home. Like, and I was just like, I ended up like falling asleep on the highway type shit. And then like I was coming off the exit. I guess like I fell asleep coming off the exit, and I ended up like hitting some shit, fucking my shit up. And um, yeah, like after that day though. Like, I was like, damn, like, I really could have, like, because it, like, anything could have happened to her, like, that shit could have just not turned out how it went, like, how it ended up turning out. So it was like, to, like, make it through that, like, I be feeling like everything after that, everything after that, like, is just like a blessing, whether it's positive or negative, like, because I'm not even supposed to have experienced that, like, you feel me? But even, like, with me, like, I got disappointed because, like, my car situation, like, I got, make a long story short, I got my car fixed at Firestone. I got my car, I got my tires replaced at Firestone because, like, my car, my tires are kind of hard to take off, but dude didn't really, like, secure the lugs properly. So I'm pulling into the driveway of my house. Mind you, my car has already been like this. I've missed, lugs are popping out of my tire throughout the work week. Throughout the work week, I didn't notice that. I just kept hearing the noise. But luckily, nothing happened to me that whole work week until I got home in my driveway, then the tire pops off. Yeah. My car is messed up. Right. But I'd be grateful that, like, it didn't have all the road. I used My car could have flipped. I would have been yeah, dead, exactly. for sure. Not I facts. definitely would have been dead. Not like, facts. So I had to be grateful for that. Yes, I'm disappointed because my car is hurt. This is my first car on my own that I put my own money into. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, but, like, I'm not. I can still I have the opportunity to drive the car. I'm still alive. I still have the opportunity to see people I care about each and every day. Right. I still have the opportunity to do this podcast. I still have opportunities to wake up yeah. like you know what I mean like that's what I'm saying it's like it's a lot of things 
Don't let this. This is a thing. This don't let disappointment steal your joy or your gratitude. Yeah. Like don't let that happen. Cause like now, when you're like walking around sad and like depressed and like feeling, feeling sorry for yourself and shit like that, it's nothing but a, a, sp- a spiral, like a downward spiral. Cause like, like whatever you tell you, like the thoughts that you have, like is what's gonna like project into like reality. So like if you're thinking like negative or thinking like sad thoughts or like shit, things like that, like like when you are thinking on that frequency it's like your brain is like or your your consciousness is like going to it's attracting these things so like you know now if something bad happens to you you're like it's like okay something else bad happens to you it's like damn now you gotta like dwell in that and the feeling of like oh my god now like i got this now i have to deal with but like rather than like switching your mentality into believing like, into being like you know like just more positive you know like Accepting things is what they are, and you know what I'm saying? Like, still maintaining a positive frequency. I feel like that's what's gonna attract blessings into your life, you know what I'm saying? Or like positive frequency things. Basically, what you just talked about right there is what, like, I've been, I go to therapy myself, but that's what that would come as cognitive behavioral therapy, like yeah. therapy. So, like, basically, that therapy it tries to work on like changing your, your thoughts, thoughts, right? Because your that's thoughts, it is, your bro. thoughts become expressed through your behavior. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people your, only behave based off their thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Your thoughts are influenced by, you know what I'm saying, what you're watching, what, like, you experience. what you're experiencing, you know? And most of the time they come from outer things. That's why, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, propaganda, like, what the government uses to, you know what I'm saying? Like, incite, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> certain things on people. The vision, things of that nature. Whatever it is, like, even, we could just use Black Lives Matter, for example, like, like that's propaganda like you feel what i'm saying like that whole movement was like orchestrated by people who like above us because we black people never was like oh we finna come together and start a movement black lives matter this shit was like pushed upon us and we all just rolled the wave oh, like, we like we were like you know what I'm saying? we didn't want to see you know what i'm saying you were that train where everybody was posting a black screen and shit and like they was like you know like you're not black if you don't post this shit or some well, shit. I just saw like my car then, bro. Yeah, I didn't post it. I don't even post it either because I'm like, I don't even post on social media. But like, I'm not falling into these fake little trends. Well, my or thing whatever. is, I don't like the vision. I don't like. I don't like. The, didn't vote. I don't like anything that like sparks the vision because like. We've already been divided for so long, but it seems like every single like decade or something, mm-hmm. there's always something new sparking some new type of division. Or there's politics. Well, it's been politics forever. Race has been a thing forever. Um, sexuality. Sexuality has been a thing that's divided forever. You know, like there's so religion. You know, what I mean, like there's so many things. Well, religion, nigga, it's so crazy. It's down to sports teams and sports fans. We're all divided. I'm not why we that. can't? Why we can't just appreciate the greatness of the basketball players that we see on the court? Why we gotta say this. is LeBron the goat or is Kobe the goat or is nigga? All of these niggas are great players. Sound, We're watching. You sound like you need to be on Gills Arena with that take, bro. That's the real <laughs> take. Like it's like it's insane. The niggas are like, oh no, Kobe's better than Jordan. Like that shit is like because like I feel like people like that also goes to people who don't feel like they want to be forgotten because they feel like if a person is not like. If they like, for example, in the basketball contest, if Michael Jordan's considered the greatest player ever of all time, his accolades will disappear. No, his accolades will not. Got right. six, six championships. He's gonna have scoring titles. Record. All that shit is cemented in history. It's nothing that nobody like, can okay. do. Like, 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 you can say like, you can say that this person was great or that person was great. Doesn't mean that like their their legacy will go away. Like, think about it. Like, for example, like I be saying, like niggas be hating on LeBron, and it's like, bro, how do you like to hate on a nigga that's great? It's crazy. Like, I'm not gonna cap. Like. That's insane. Well, part of that, well, part of that is Cause also because you, you a Kobe fan or you a Jordan fan, so like you gotta diminish this man's accolades and shit because you feel like your your favorite player is better than. That's just bias, you know. People gotta work on that, like, right? I just have, feel like that shit is dumb. Like I feel like the whole mentality of that shit is dumb. Type shit. Well, it just comes from like like I said, it comes from a point of not wanting to be forgotten. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be. No one wants to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. In the, in the, but we all gonna be forgotten. Like mm-hmm. like to be honest, like. Mm-hmm. 100 years from now, who gonna remember Michael Jordan? And I know that sounds crazy to say because like he's Niggas will probably remember, remember Jordan 100 years from now, but 500 years from now, probably not. Like 100 years from now, they gonna probably remember Jordan, but they're not gonna remember every single minute detail. They're not, exactly, they're not gonna remember every detail, like, like stuff everything. Gets, stuff gets lost, stuff gets lost, lost in yes. the time stream. Cause like we still remember, like we still know like William Shakespeare and like, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas was around like, like the 1600s, 400 years ago and shit. Like, 
So I mean, we still studying they work. So I feel like niggas will still be like. But stuff does get lost in translation. But we don't know everything. Boy, everything William Shakespeare was on. That nigga could have been on some bullshit. And we, we wouldn't even know. Like. Oh, he could have been on some D shit. Because remember, like, remember, like some people, there was like a controversy at one point. People didn't think that he wrote all the plays that he wrote. Right. He could have stolen them hoes <laughs> from some from some black slaves. Here he go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, facts. But like, we went into a big old tangent. I lost all track of what I was thinking about. <laughs> we were talking about disappointment. So yes, yeah, disappointment. Don't let it be. Don't let disappointment stop you from chasing your dreams. Um, take that big chance. Don't let fear also. We're gonna get to fear. Fear is F. We're gonna get to fear. Yeah, we need to get to fear because a lot Cause of people are scared. I can tell you, fear had a hold on me. Yeah. Because fear is healthy too. Because fear stops you from making stupid decisions. But fear can hold you. I'm scared to cold call. I'll be I'll be needing to cold call and I'll be scared to do it. Hmm. I knew somebody was calling. Me. Oh, stone. Dang. Oh shit. That's GGs. GGs in the chat. Well. <laughs> While we get that cleaned up, till the next time, I'm coming in with um, letter C and D on the next episode. All right. So next time, on Stone Clean, we're going to do we're gonna do letter C and D. I'll let y'all know what the names of them are going to be when we get there. Peace.